Hello and welcome to another episode of Energy and Star Sign Readings with myself, Thomas Yalak. This is episode 101 and my guest today will be the fabulous Laura Jean. Remember to please subscribe and also like the Facebook page and please, please, please share the video with as many people as possible. Thank you. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to another week of Energy and Star Sign readings with myself, Thomas Yannick, and my guest, Laura Jean. We are looking at the week of April the 5th to the 11th, 2021. Now remember, on Monday the 12th, we have a new moon, which actually comes in at 3.31 in the morning energetically, which means whatever the guides are telling us for this week, both as the overall energy as well as individually for us uh, within our star signs, will be amplified and therefore stronger towards the end of the week. Probably whatever needs to be to be looked at will be strongest um, on Friday and Saturday. If you haven't looked at it, just in case we need to look at something, who knows, but never underestimate um, a moon phase. And a new moon obviously is about new beginnings, therefore this is a week of whatever comes here um, to get this resolved. So that's the first thing I'm just getting <clears throat> for us not to do um, things half-assed. The other thing that is already apparent, just energetically speaking here, that this is not going to be a low energy week by any means. So that's the first thing before we even go into the overall energy. Energetically speaking, I'm already feeling we're, we're, we're building up some momentum where we can <clears throat> progress from, if that makes sense. But in order for us to let that to, to figure this all out, we go and have a look at the overall energy for the week ahead before we go into the very first star sign. We're still in Aries. And so I'm going to have a look at the overall energy and then we do the first uh, star sign, which is Aries. But here's the overall energy for the week ahead. And we're looking at the week of. April the 5th to the 11th, 2021. How awesome. <clears throat> the, 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 the messages in words are inner peace and illumination. So that doesn't mean inner peace just comes to you. <clears throat> what it means is that because this is sort of a high energy week and we're heading towards a state or a state of new beginnings, with the full moon that is sort of, you know, obviously um, happening the first day of the week after this one. Um, now is the time to say whatever I'm carrying around with me that doesn't make me feel good has to go. Now that's easier said than done, but yet when you say I've had enough, I deserve to feel lighter, that's a message to deal with your... Um, issues with your trauma for a better word um, <clears throat> and also um, it, it because you're asking for it and we're in a high energy week and get a new beginning your guides will probably work overtime if there is such a thing <laughs> for them <laughs> and um, so you will get all the help you need because you have illumination as the outgoing energy for the week ahead and what that means is that not only can you now say it? And it's not so much that you need to know what you're looking at, you know, whatever isn't quite letting you have inner peace is what you're looking at. Don't look for, I need to understand what I'm doing here, I need to understand this. This isn't about understanding, this is about manifesting change that makes you feel better. And illumination therefore means that you will therefore see how a change in attitude, a change in programming, if that makes sense, because we program ourselves through everything and anything we do, <clears throat> how that makes you or can make you feel much more at ease and at peace with yourself. So that's the overall energy for the week ahead. Um, nothing heavy here, which I absolutely like and love, but the only heaviest thing in there is for you to actually look at the things that you're carrying around with you and literally just state, help, I've had enough, let's begin to tackle them. <coughs> and that's all you need to do, right? That was the overall energy for the week ahead. Now we're going to the very first star sign, which is Aries. Okay. So 
So we have the Page of Swords on the New Year's Tarot today and some Angel cards. And we have the Guardian Angel of Young Adults. Me. <laughs> So the message on this says, I am guided and protected as I begin to choose my path in life. I'm drawn to the, the, the flag on here, which actually looks like it presented itself as a key. So there seems to be um, uh, what I'm picking up as is a, a new idea, a new concept or a new way of looking at things. Um, which just like the uh, the the overall energy and being the sign that we're in as well, obviously, is that um, to to stay with the initial energy of what you're receiving and not get too carried away. Um, let it present itself as um, as a kind of uh, organic process rather than trying to work out everything that's going to happen as a result of your new idea in order for it to stay fresh and in order for the right help to come towards you and um, so that your judgment doesn't come, become clouded by the what ifs or you know how, how it can work. So it's just to have faith in the fact that you have now decided what you need to do and uh, stick with it because the doors will open. This is what I'm seeing from the key. It's like you have a key to a new solution um, and just stick with that energy and allow that to flourish naturally. Yeah, and also remember, <clears throat> I said that so many times, but we have always, uh, oftentimes, overlapping energy um, from star sign to star sign. And here we have it from the overall energy to the first star sign mm -hmm. because as you probably hopefully remember <laughs> in the overall energy, it also says it's not important to understand everything. Right? So that's um, the second time we heard that, uh, so to speak. <laughs> and now we're going into Taurus. Let's see what we got for Taurians. You have the dove and the tiger. What they're saying to you is if you just look at your surroundings, if you just realize that really not a lot gets past you, so you know that when you reflect on situations and when you look at situations, you can see them. And in, as a matter of fact, you do see them for what they are. And it feels to me that, energetically speaking, for the reals this week, the things that you are going through have probably been with you for quite some time. The feeling that I'm getting is, is they're not talking about, oh, this just happened and I have to deal with it. That doesn't mean if there is something new coming in that this isn't upsetting, but... What they're asking you to look at is the stuff, again, or send him with your energy, that you have been carrying with you for a long time. And to, to top it is for you to realize that you can assess situations just by looking at it. You don't have to have it explained. Therefore, don't have any second, second guesses and any doubt. You see exactly what's going on. <clears throat> and because you have the tiger, which is basically the animal that says, I have so much stamina. If I live where the lion lives, the lion wouldn't be the king of the jungle, <laughs> if that makes sense. So what they're saying is, have a bit of oomph to yourself. Like, yeah, I'm good. Right? I deserve better. I can do better. I can create better. Um, so things get better because I will it, if that makes sense. So <clears throat> what they're asking you in short is to um, be a bit more assertive in asking for the things you want. <clears throat> that was the, the energy for Taurus. Now we're going into Gemini. <clears throat> okay, Gemini, Gemini. Hmm. Okay, so we have the Nine of Cups and the Guardian Angel of Youth. So the message here is, as I share my enthusiasm, humour and sense of fun, I protect and honour my youthful spirit. So straight away from this, two really, really positive cards. Um, so it's about really indulging in what feels good and specifically uh, to allow yourself to receive as well, I'm picking up on. And yeah, just to enjoy wherever you are and wherever you're at with presence 
um, because you are protected and guided um, just to really go for it and show who you are, um, be your complete self, entire self and not to worry or hide any of it um, and just just bring all the youthfulness and playfulness about and then things will create and manifest from that point. Okay, so remember we heard, we hear a lot, you know, manifesting um, situations and, and, and energies quite a lot. <clears throat> so we, what is required, I suppose, for all of us this week is um, awareness that we can do more. And sometimes when you feel like there's nothing I can do, you can always ask for it to get better, <laughs> if that makes sense, right? So thank you. Now we're going into Cancerians. Let's see what we got for Cancer. For Cancerians, we have purification and openness. Whatever it is you're going through will get better, whether or not you can see it, right? These are all, um, or these were all, for a large extent, or to a large extent, exercises in learning who you are, in finding yourself within the chaos, if that makes sense. So there is no randomness in the universe that, that all of a sudden says, like, I want you to have a hard time. It doesn't quite work that way. And what I'm getting is that Cancerians have gone, or some of you at least, at least the, it's the ones that probably find this because that's only how it works, <clears throat> have gone, gone through a harder time, but as you come out of it, that's where the purification starts, where you realize, okay, now I can let that go. Again, another topic that we repeatedly have in the star signs. And then you have openness. And all they're saying to you, if you're open to let it just play out, not chasing things and certainly not worrying about outcomes you cannot control. What I'm getting is, um, so for instance, is this scenario that they're giving me, <coughs> is that whoever we're talking to here is, some of you are waiting for something to happen so you can move forward. And this might actually be a place, if that makes sense, not just an energy. So if you are someone who says, I, 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 I'm waiting for the key to be handed to me, that's never going to happen. Even if you get a key handed, if you go there with the same energy, it's going to be the same outcome. Nothing changes unless you realize it needs to change. So what they're saying to you is, <clears throat> while you're manifesting, whatever it is you want and manifest, the universe is listening, right? And they're helping to get you there. But if you are feeling like I'm on some, on some sort of a waiting list here, right, and I have to push, um, even though that makes sense sometimes in the here and now to push, um, to get what you deserve and get what you want. But what the guys are saying to Cancerians this week, rather than talking about it, chasing it loudly, just say, I know that I deserve better, make it happen. What I'm getting is to really, as Cancerians, um, <laughs> your guides are working for you all the time. <clears throat> but it, it, what I'm getting is for you to tell them, look, you know, uh, help, do, it would be wrong to say do a bit more, but they don't have an ego, so you can say to them, do a bit more, <laughs> if you get frustrated. <clears throat> but be open to let things play out, because energetically speaking, having purification as your main energy for the, for the week, um, there is no additional pain coming that all of a sudden hits you like a bulldozer, if that makes sense, because you're pur purifying. Should there be anything coming where you feel like, wow, that was heavy, that's because you needed an extra bit to cleanse, if that makes sense. But energetically speaking, for Cancerians, this is not a low energy week, but you need to be open, because the feeling that I'm getting is that some Cancerians, <laughs> by default, it's, sort of, it's, it's a star sign trait, I suppose, <clears throat> you're trying to control a lot of things simply because it makes you feel safer. And I get it, it's not a bad thing, <coughs> but all the guides are saying is you either trust or you try to control. And all they're saying is don't try to control. We're working on it, right? And you're working on it by just being open. So be open, right? That was Cancerians <coughs> going to the next star sign, which is the star sign of Leo. So for Leo, we have uh, the Angel of Forgiveness and the Five of Swords. Um, immediately, this is talking to me about battles and emotional battles um, that have been in the past that might have a repeated nature or that are showing up um, at this point in time. And 
it's kind of talking about choosing your battles and whether when to drop something obviously being in the new moon energy the message here is i choose to forgive all of those who have hurt me in the past this is about recognizing whether you may be carrying forth something um, to all new spaces and things that you encounter based on this energy of some hurt or pain in the past so um, being a new moon um, make sure that you're not holding on to any of these energies and they don't actually apply to where you're at and being if you're being an openness to say there is no battle here and that I need to drop the guard or any pre context of things going wrong or people misunderstanding you I'm having so um, forgive anything that may have happened previously in order to allow new energies to come into your life and actually manifest more happiness that you really desire okay thank you very much that was Leo going into Virgo Virgos have the leopard and the polar bear <clears throat> what that really means is again the, the, the the topic of manifesting and also letting letting go seems to be quite quite prominent. And yet, please remember that this is a week, even if we get snow overnight, <laughs> this is a week of sunshine for all of us. The overall energy is really, really high in the week of uh, April the 5th to the 11th. What I'm also getting for Virgo, interestingly, is um, obviously we have the um, the Easter Sunday on the 4th, which is not this week we're talking about. Um, so should you have encounters around Easter that left you feeling depleted, make changes for next year or make changes for the next event or the next date that comes up where you meet the same people. What I'm getting for Virgo is that sometimes you, you're dealing with the same energies, could be just siblings, could be family, that's how it feels to me, um, sort of <coughs> closer than friends, if that makes sense. Um, and all the guys are saying is, you know, you decide who you hang out with. Really, really important. But that's just a side thing, because I just got this <coughs> as, an, as, an, as an add-on, so to speak, <coughs> which is typical my guides, which is why I talk for England and Germany. <coughs> that said, <laughs> the energy that you have here is the leopard and the polar bear. And what they're saying to you this week is to remember, again, easier said than done, who you are. What the leopard is known for is stealth, is I can go for things without causing problems, without rattling cages, you know, kind of thing. That, that sort of feeling, and all they're saying to you is, you know, as long as you go forward, nothing really comes your way that you have to fight with if that makes sense just keep going <clears throat> for virgos because you have the polar bear which is also basically the animal that talks about healing all bears are about feminine energy are about healing and the polar bear of all the bears is the most vulnerable so what they're saying is if you get irate because people make you feel less which again might have to do with whoever you encounter around Easter, the Easter weekend, because it's, it's sort, of, sort of all related. Normally when the guys give me stuff, even as add-on, it's sort of all related. <coughs> Excuse me. But the polar bear, still, you wouldn't mess with one. They're really powerful animals. It's just that where they live, there are less chances, and there's also less food, if that makes sense, which makes them more vulnerable and more prone prone to um to to difficulties if that makes sense right and so what i'm getting for for virgos is to realize that unless you just keep going and focus on yourself there might be situations that might to unhinge you so you get less out of life so my feeling for virgos in short is that you can be affected quite a bit by the opinions and the energies of situations and people. And the leopard is basically saying to you, you're unique. There's nobody else who is like you. So you don't have to fit in. And the people who want to fit in, they should earn their spots before they hang out with you, if that makes sense. So be who you are at all times. That's ultimately what this is, right? That was Virgo going into Libra. 
Okay, so Libra, <clears throat> we have the Judgment card and uh, the Angel of Glory. And the message on here is, I sing praise and glory to the source of all life. There's a lot of positive energy coming from this. Um, and particularly drawn to um, the support that you have, the, the guidance and the, the backing of, of spirit that may be with you at this time, that recognises your achievements, that recognises the current place of balance that you are in. And actually this could be a week of a lot of things coming to fruition. What I'm picking up in is in the sense of um, situations rectifying themselves um, where you may have had some issues in the past and that the way to um, accept these is to just celebrate them and be grateful and to expect good things to happen as well and particularly drawn to the singing and singing praise into things so um, really to enjoy and be in high spirits and uh and kind of embrace vocally as well your happiness about anything that seems to resolve itself so by giving gratitude and um, really be openly happy about any re resolutions that you have with people because you then set the tone for enjoying and welcoming people to come forward to you and speak about anything that may have been amiss in the past as well. So um, it does feel like there will be some things, maybe conversations, situations where there will be a lot of making amends and uh, to just really celebrate those and enjoy it. Okay, that was Libra. <clears throat> now going into Scorpio. And for Scorpios, we have the Swan and the Seahorse. Now what is important for this <clears throat> it's also what I'm getting here is, is to look at your very star sign. You are a Scorpio, right? The smaller they are, the more poison they have, if that makes sense, right? Um, the larger you are, the less poison you have. In other words, what they're asking you to do is to not feel small, because when you are feeling small, you can be lethal. Which means if people are pushing you and you wait until you explode, nothing will be resolved. So that's what I'm getting just from looking at Scorpio, is to remember the energy that your star sign is giving you, which is to remember what you are, what, does, what, 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 what animal represents you, if that makes sense, right? Um, remember, there's a lot of different ways of, of looking into astrology. It's just in the Western ones, they're all named by, um, by, by Greek, in mythology. So that Scorpio was never an aggressor, if that makes sense, <laughs> right? Um, so you're not aggressive, but what they're saying to you is it's when people push you, you, you tend to wait too long before you speak up. That's just the energy of Scorpio for this week. And what they're saying to you is, because it's a high energy week, please, please remember this. Meet that high energy with high energy. Go and go like, yeah, awesome, right? Even if you don't feel it initially, feel like, yeah, it's great. It's going to be a good day, right? It really is important to be a bit silly about things for Scorpio because there's also a, um, a seriousness that doesn't always serve you well. So this is a high energy week. Meet it. Meet the energy because you have the swan and the seahorse. Now, the swan is basically an animal that needs to be, it needs to wait, before it is waterproof enough so it can actually swim, if that makes sense. So there's symbolism here. And the symbology is that you are a swan. You are already waterproof. You can already swim. So you don't have to prove anything to anyone this week. And then you have the seahorse, which is about realizing that you have, you come with strength and with energy that is very, very unique. What they're showing me is obviously that, that in the seahorse <coughs> life, um, the males have the baby kind, kind of thing. You know, I'm, I'm glad I didn't have to give birth. I was, you know, it's the one thing I'm like, oh my God, how do you do it? Anyway, <laughs> what I'm getting is there is this uniqueness about you that is 
sometimes what makes people misunderstand you because they have problems reading you as such. And um, you are who you are. And you don't, again, I get it, this fitting in thing. You don't have to fit in at all. But you need to realize because seahorses, 90% of seahorses, statistically speaking, do not make it in captivity. Right? So they're not animals that, that you can capture easily to display somewhere. Not that this makes any sense to any animal to be you know, um, displayed somewhere. But energetically speaking, seahorses, yeah, seahorses, horses, yeah, <laughs> possibly. Um, in other words, because you're not doing well in captivity, if you have to, if you believe you have to follow a life or live a life that ultimately isn't you, then don't be surprised if, if eventually it can manifest in physical ailments or even mental health issues. It's because you're not cut out for this. And reality is nobody is really cut out for, for not being who they are. It's just in this week, because you have the swan which says, yeah, I am waterproof. But, but swans are also because they obviously turn from this <laughs> tiny piece of fluff into this water thing, water <laughs> bird, if that makes sense. <clears throat> it feels like a loss of innocence. You know, we look at, at, at the young of swans and find them sweet. And then you look at a, at a tall, grown-up swan, and people go, like, well, the hell, you can take on a dog, <laughs> right? There's, there's not that much love for, mm -hmm. for swans, <clears throat> energetically speaking. So what they're saying to you is, it's not important if you are liked. It is important that you like yourself. And also, because it's a high-energy week and the swan is a good guy, because the swan is about transformation, you're constantly changing, which is the only reason why people tend to sometimes have problems with you because they have no idea where you're going today, if that makes sense. Uh, but it is your essence to be interested in many things. And that's what they're saying for Scorpios. Just be that person. Also, you have seahorses and swans. And even though it is perception, perception is not necessarily reality, but you, you <coughs> ask people, you will find that most people would describe them as beautiful just by the optics of the swan and the seahorse. Look, they're cute, right? So use that energy for you. A lot of people find you very appealing. It doesn't mean, you know, you're, you're a stunner. This is not about looks now, but your energy is appealing. And so there are a lot of people out there that like you, even though you may be quirky, right? If that makes sense. So. So just accept that not that you're not everybody's cup of tea, right? And that you certainly do not have to spoo any venom um, to make them listen to you, if that makes sense, right? So tons of stuff for Scorpio. I apologize for rambling on, <laughs> but I only work here. <laughs> and now we're going into Capricorn. We have Capricorn, Aquarius, Aquarius and Pisces left. And now we're going into the star sign of Capricorn before we do. Remember, we're looking at the week of April the 5th to the 11th. On the 12th, we have a new moon. So anything and everything you hear for the individual star signs will be more important and more highlighted towards the end of the week as the energy of the full moon really comes in. Right? So, Capricorn. So for Capricorn, we have the, the Four of Wands and the Angel of Spiritual Growth. Um, immediately what I've picked up from this is uh, about balance um, and it's about balance in the sense of um, in, on one hand it will be time so balancing your energies so your interactions with others um, I get the sense that there's been a bit of an uphill climb to come back to yourself um, the message that's on here is the way I become my spirit more spiritual is to simply become myself. But I'm also getting a sense of uh, you already feel as if it's took a long time to come back to a sense of self. And it's um, this week there, there may be um, a few demands on your time and maybe a lot of high energy discussions. Like we said at the beginning, it feels like there is a bit of high energy to there, but... 
make sure there's balance in between you having space and time for yourself to remember that about how far that you've come to and not kind of get dragged into a past energy of um being there for others or overly doing for others and maintain that sense of individual individuality and also catering for your own needs because there's real true success there'll be a turning point um that with the new moon when it gathers, gathers the energy that you can really concrete in the achievements that you've made and the sense of balance and peace within yourself. So just watch out for um, balancing your time and energy with time alone and things that really nurture your soul according to where you're at now and what you've already achieved. Okay, thank you very much. That was um, Capricorn. Now we're going into Aquarius. Aquarius, energetically speaking, what I'm getting is <laughs> everything changes and the only constant in the universe if that makes sense uh, is change nothing ever stays the same we're aging every single day whether or not we like it not everybody looks as great at 54 than i do right but the point they're making is everything changes and this week for aquarians you have to really realize everything changes there's nothing wrong with it and i have lived through all these changes and I'm still here, and for the most part, you're okay. So they're asking you to not be worried about whatever the future holds for you, because as long as you are in the now, okay in the now, you will be supported anyway. So even if there is things that you cannot yet see, and sure, we all have um, things come our way uh, occasionally that are scary, but what I'm getting is because you have two things here, you have security and pleasure. So what they're saying is, number one, you're safe. Number two, you're looking for safety. And that's why you sometimes have difficulties finding pleasure in what you do, because you easily, scareable is one word, but you easily like, oh, I'm not sure where I'm going here. I hope everything works out for me. So it's almost like you're wrestling <clears throat> with situations and all the guys are saying to you it's actually really positive for Aquarians. you're looking for security that's what you're getting right your guides are there um they're doing this because some of you might actually move or, or or do things that are not quite normal for you so there might be bigger things coming um, <coughs> at this point in time for Aquarians. um you're going to be fine and pleasure is right around the corner when you are just going with the flow really really important for Aquarians it's just the energy of Aquarians this week is sort of <laughs> Aquarians by default when you look at the star sign you're water bearers you make things happen the problem is you make things happen for a lot of other people <laughs> and so what they're saying to you is make things happen for yourself you are the water bearer you therefore are the, the bringer of life and so therefore you always keep going and all they're saying to Aquarians is to remember it you know, you're not going to be put in situations that are dire, if that makes sense, right? Um, because you got this. And because you have pleasure here, that's what they really want from you this week, is to go all out, I want to feel good. I feel good. Needle, needle, needle. needle. It's sort of, sort of, sort of what I'm getting, sort of being like, yeah. Right? It's sort of party mode kind of thing. And so what the guys are saying is be in party mode. Right? What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> you can just feel good about it. Right? So that's what I'm getting for Aquarius. Lose that feeling of, it's almost like a feeling of dread that you're carrying around with you for no reason. And all the guides are saying is, well, you can either feel good about stuff or not, up to you. Because that's the other thing about guides. Guides do not hold your hands and say, like, oh, we want you to be happy. Because even though they want you to be happy, you decide, to a large extent, how you feel. And once your energy is already affected by, you know, not feeling so well, Things haven't turned out that way, which, are, which is understandable that they put a, a, a dampener on you. This energy stays with you for a long time. And all they're saying to you this week, <laughs> just to say it again, high energy week. You have high energy, things will work better. And because you have pleasure as the outgoing energy for this week, enjoy your week. <clears throat> have fun, but also trust that the universe is on your side and by your side. Okay, that's all we got for Aquarians going to the final star sign, <laughs> Pisces. Um, 
And again, we looked, we looked at the week of April the 5th to the 11th, 2021. Please subscribe. Please like the, um, <coughs> the Facebook page. Um, you can always leave comments. You may or may not read them. <laughs> right? I normally read all the comments, but I don't comment back kind of thing, you know. A busy guy. <coughs> but by, by all means, you know, um, connect um, with us. And I say that a lot. If you feel that this video, or these, these, these videos help you, in any way, then please share them with others because who knows, um, you might want to share this with someone who really needs to hear what the guys have to say. Right? And with that all said, going into uh, the last star sign of the week, which is Pisces. So, Pisces, we have uh, the Sun and the Angel of Wisdom. So, the message on the card is Wisdom comes from the depths of my experience. And what I'm getting from this is that um, a lot of light, a lot of illumination, obviously we have the sun here, but also this uh, angel here is carrying a candle, which is kind of signifying that you to trust that you know how to navigate through the dark and that the light always comes. So kind of, I'm also getting the sense of, we have a, there's a horse on this card for the sun, which for me represents like freedom. And it's to um, really let go of any of those occasional nagging doubts that, you know, your future experience may involve more darkness. It's kind of like let go of the reins, really enjoy yourself, allow yourself to feel freedom and um, recognise that you can handle whatever comes your way anyway. And with that is a massive amount of strength and self-belief. Um, that is here because I'm really getting from the cards you have turned really significant corners over whatever length of time or something extremely personal and it's to just expect goodness now to come in and not um, not worry at all and enjoy enjoy the illumination and enjoy the sunshine and um, also to explore some new things um, maybe even to seek a new adventure or seek um, a new circle or new experience or hobby because um, when the light is shining all the roads are illuminated and it feels like there's many roads that you could go down at the moment to enjoy and feel things that are for your future because it definitely feels like the significant timeline is, is finished and wrapping up. That sounds awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I love that being Pisces and you know being Pisces. Anyway, um, thank you so much, Laura. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Awesome as always. And um, yeah, I see you all next week. When you hear me shouting now, it's because I started running, and now I'm in bloody pain, and I have to go and switch off the video. So I, I try not to shout, but anyway, here it goes. Ah, old man syndrome. <laughs> bloody hell. <laughs> bye bye.